gentlemen again how are you today good Great. so nice to see you it's nice to see you too uh, so uh, actually you know my questions uh, in general are for both of you but still um, i'd like to start with uh, dean uh, where does the idea for the arc come from it was it was a, a a conversation I had with a man named Michael Wright, who uh, currently runs uh, MGM Plus, but he used to run uh, TNT when I did the original Leverage and the original Librarians, and uh, we were just having a discussion about TV shows we'd like to watch, and he was saying he missed the the, the show about a diverse group of people who were in a contained spaceship, uh, you know, on on the way to an adventure, and it just got me thinking about well, how would I if I got my opportunity to tell that show, how would I do it? And I got more and more excited and, and I wrote this pilot and uh, luckily sci-fi dug it and wanted to do it. And so I called and begged Jonathan Glasner to come on board and help me with it. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we've just had a fantastic time making this show. And Jonathan, what is it that convinced you to join the project? Well, it didn't take much to convince me. I, I read the script and loved it and saw 15 stories in front of me just instantly. and. Uh, you know, whenever a writer sees that, they, at least I do, I jump on it. Um, in general, what is it that both of you like about, you know, having uh, some human beings, uh, some people confined in a spaceship, uh, you know, moving uh, towards uh, a new home, a new planet? Well, I think, you know, it's, it's a pressure cooker. And so, you know, whatever conflicts or or personal dramas you would have in a normal show, it gets heightened because they're they're all in this contained space. They can't escape each other. Um, but I think what makes this one unique uh, uh, from other ones is that in the opening scene of, of the very first episode, all the leadership of the spaceship are killed in an accident. And the people who are left, they weren't supposed to be running this. They weren't supposed to be in charge. They were supposed to be mentored by these great people who were gonna teach them how to be leaders. And suddenly they have to be leaders today. And I think that's, that, that's what makes this really unique, is that it, it, this is an opportunity to really watch the triumph of the human spirit, of, about how, how we rise to the occasion when called upon. And, Jonathan, and how we don't, and how we don't sometimes. Yeah. Um, I've seen the first episodes, and uh, I, I've got some 2001 Space Odyssey vibes, some Independence Day and Stargate vibes. Um, I would like to hear, in general, your influences for this show. Well, you know, I, I think that the reality of doing a science fiction today is you can't ignore the giant's shoulders you're standing on. You know, uh, some shows try to pretend like they're the first show to ever do it. And we don't even bother with that. You know, we assume that you already know what a sleeper pod is, that you've seen uh, Alien and you've seen uh, uh, passages, uh, you know, you've seen the other shows that have had these things. Uh, so, uh, you know, look, I, I fell in love with science fiction when I was a little boy and my mother was doing a guest star on the original Star Trek. Whoa. And she came home from set with a with one of the stuntmen's phasers that she gave to me. And, you know, that was like giving crack to an addict. I mean, that's that started my <laughs> whole relationship and love of this. And I would say, you know, the work of George Lucas, the work of Steven Spielberg, the work of of uh, James Cameron, all of that has been giant influences. Yeah, I, I would say the same thing. Uh, probably the biggest influence on me probably what sent me down the path of being a science fiction writer was the original Star Trek and Star Trek The Next Generation, which I grew up on. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I just, I, I love the way you can use science fiction to tell a, a story of that's actually going on today that would be too much of a political hot topic to actually do today and put it in the future and change it around and, and, and make it into a little fable. Um, which is, I think, uh, an important thing to do in science fiction. I like the series as a psychological study of the fact that even in the future, even a hundred years from now, humans, hu uh, people in general won't change and uh, the behavior is the same, the same it was even a th a thousands of, of years ago. Um, what is it that uh, it, in human uh, behavior in general, uh it's that that click that makes us uh, makes us repeat the same mistakes over and over again 
Well, that's a that's a huge question. <laughs> that's like a question for scientists and philosophers. Um, but in my mind, I think I think we have evolutionarily we have tribalism in our in our genes, and I think that's causes a lot of problems for us. I think it's uh, you know who's in charge, who's the leader, who's who's the alpha dog is a is a big part of our our genetic makeup you know who's who's the they that we have to be against is a big part of our genetic makeup um and i you know i just think it plays out in in everything you know and yet all these things propel us to be the best versions of ourselves you know uh, I, when i've talked to people who say well i don't want to be frightened and i would always go well if you weren't frightened you'd walk in front of that bus and get run over you know the the our flaws fuel our our, our our virtues and i think that's what makes great drama it has always made great drama and this is this is a a setting where all of that gets exacerbated having a woman in in, in charge of the spaceship in uh, lieutenant sharon garnett um how how did you come with this narrative solution and how does it reflect our uh, reality well, I don't think it was a choice to say, well, let, wouldn't it be interesting if it was a woman instead of a man? I think what we really looked at, it was just simply uh, what are the differences of these characters? And only one of them is kind of uh, uh, inclined to fill any gap. In other words, uh, Garnett, is, 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 she can't help herself. If she sees that there's, a, that there's a job that needs to get done, she jumps in to do it without wondering if she should or she shouldn't. That's just her character. And so when there was this vacuum in, in leadership, she didn't do it because she wanted to be the leader. She just knew it needed to get done and she knew how to do it. Um, the other two, they hesitated. And by the time they realized they wanted that position, it was already filled. <laughs> yeah, but it still creates, you know, some uh, interesting dynamics between her and her colleagues, let's put it like this, or her fellow uh, ship members. It does, yeah. but but our, our hope is that, that 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 clash has to do with the content of their character, not their sexual orientation or their gender. No, for sure, for sure. I mean, and even in, in, we can say that sci-fi genre in general has been uh, very uh, revolutionary in, in this, uh, as far as this goes, you know, uh, it's, it is not the first time we see a woman in leadership uh, in a, sh a sci-fi contest, that's for sure. And uh, it really um, shows up shows us you know the potentiality of uh, these uh, in general these narrative solu solutions that's right yeah. and and uh, you know I, I think it's just fun to watch the dynamic between the three of them <laughs> yeah that's that's true um before i uh, wrapped up uh, how was it the mo the trickiest part to write and then to execute or you know to uh, to shoot <laughs> You want to take that one, Dean? Sure. I think the trickiest part is that John and I write these things as though we had $200 million and all the time in the world to make it. And then we're said, all right, we got to get this done in eight days. And we both go, um, all right, how are we going to do that? But I think that the advantage that, that both Jonathan and I are both directors, uh, we were able to kind of go into our bag of tricks and figure out, you know, well, every cheat we've ever done in any show we've ever done before to try to make something look bigger when you had less time and, and less resources. Uh, you know, we, we used everything we've ever learned to try and 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 make this uh, fit our very ambitious ideas. And, and I think that was the trickiest part. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Best of luck with your show. I liked the, the, the screeners. So uh, thank you again for giving us that show. And hopefully I will share again from you in the future. Okay, well, hopefully great. you like the rest nice of the meeting season. You. So let's, let's talk after you've seen the finale. <laughs> yeah, of course. Why not? Thank you again. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.